Yeah, me again. <clears throat> so, the bearing is out. <clears throat> oh dear. You hear that one up? God, it's been a bearing for too long. Look. I've never seen one that bad. Now, quick tip when I do these, I get the old drill. Why well, them bad boys? That has got to be seated nicely. That bit there, that face there, has got to be seated nicely in this rim here. Now, what someone's done before, you can't really see on camera. See this how it's rusting? That tells you that water's been allowed, even though it sits on here, it's been dropping down here. Look, now the reason that's been doing that, see this bird edge here, look there, there, and there. When someone's done it before, they've done some on here before, and they've twatted that and it's burned it over. So the wheel bearing, instead of it sitting straight, it's sitting like that a little bit. So these tyres may well be wearing, obviously, because the, the bearing's sitting like that. The tyre's going to be sitting like that, so it'll be wearing on the outside edge. So what I'm going to do, what I usually do, whenever I do wheel bearings, you see all the crap that's coming out of there. It's around about four or five times. Old trick of the trade. Put it on the opposite way. Because your bristles going the way. Look at that. Look at the stuff it's written. And it's around the edge here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a file. I'm going to file this off. Just that bit there. Because you can't really see it, but I can't, you see it, look. It's just starting to bear out. Obviously, if it's not flat here, like I say, it'll all be amplified the further you bring it out. Obviously, that's there. Your wheel bearing is going to be here. Your wheel's out here. So if it's like probably an eighth of a degree there, it's probably going back here. It's going to be about four or five degrees. So, yeah, it'll be up and then skipping around corners. So, yeah. It's just a little bit of well, the original suspension and everything on it. This is one clean car, this is. I'm telling you. So yeah, fuck you, Barry. It ain't a genuine, it's been replaced. It's a non-gen one, so, ah oh dear. Right, let's get the new bearing in. I just thought I'd share that with you. This are all good. Well I've done with the bolts. I'll get them out and show them, yep. Do the deep bolt. I don't know where the other one is. So what I did is, uh, as you can see, I ran a screwdriver inside. What you do is just hit the head on the on the bolt, get a good tap there, and then get a screwdriver and get it so all your exits are out. And then get a good sized chisel. Here's mine, which I believe is a genuine snap on one. I've had it since I was 18, been some years. And what you do, you'll see on all of them. Look, just it's just like an impact gun. You just shock the outside of them because the, the actual torque of turning them on the outside is better than on the inside. So instead of putting your, your bit that you use, that's a bit I use, to get them off, I think they're a T45 or T50, always first give a couple of taps round to break the seal in here. I mean, these are non-genuine bolts, genuine ones are blue. These are none and they've got no seal on them either. I'll put a little, even though the new ones that come, come with Loctite on them, I'll still just put a little bit there, just a little bit, just to lock them on. And I only use the semi-hard stuff, I don't use the red stuff, just use the green stuff. Um, but yeah, you can see, look, that's had water ingress in there, look. So that was a bad one. I don't think there's a good one out of them. But yeah, what I always do, as I'm pulling them in, when I've tightened them up, just, just put a little bit of grease in the end of them. I know it's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're going over the top. You think, when it comes to taking them off, You've not got this problem. Right, well, that's been helpful, as usual. See you in a bit, bye.